Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. <laughs> This is Oceania, and here is Fiji. Now let's see what's been going on, shall we? Fiji consists of hundreds of islands and islets, many of them mountainous and thickly forested, with scenic coconut palm studded beaches. It is part of the Pacific Island grouping known as Melanesia, and while its early history is clouded in conjecture, we're told the first inhabitants arrived roughly five to three thousand years ago, bringing plants, pigs, and pottery with them. The people were separated into various chiefdoms, and sailed the seas in double-hulled boats called Ndrua, and used whale teeth as money, and lived in huts of wood and straw, and being typical humans, waged war on each other. Even dwelling in a tropical paradise doesn't stop people from clubbing each other on the head it seems. The first European to lay eyes on Fiji was the Dutch explorer Abel Tasman in 1643, during his search for a great southern landmass. In 1789, Englishman William Bligh was the first to chart the islands of Fiji, but Europeans mostly stayed away until various merchants discovered valuable sandalwood, and these rather repulsive echinoderms called sea cucumbers, which people would pay to eat for some reason. The first western town, Levuka, was established around 1820 and became an important port. Fijian chiefs, meanwhile, acquired European weapons to use against their enemies. Christianity was also introduced with an influx of missionaries who told the Fijians to cut their hair shorter and to stop eating people. The 1840s was a time of war between rival chiefs, and the following decade saw one man become the most powerful, Thakombao. In 1854 he became a Christian, but that didn't stop him from crushing his enemies, and after a number of years he managed to unify the islands of Fiji into a single state for the first time in 1871. But the American government blamed him for an arson attack on the home of their consul back in 1849, and demanded monetary compensation that Thakombao could not pay. So he agreed to hand over rulership to Britain, and it became a British colony. The first year was a calamity. A lack of quarantine procedures saw a measles epidemic wipe out around a third of Fiji's population. Governor Sir Arthur Gordon stepped in afterwards with the aim of doing good for the Fijians. He prohibited the exploitation of Fijian people for labor, and made it illegal for Fijian people's lands to be sold. Since his beneficence towards the natives would lead to economic decline, however, Gordon rubber-stamped the importing of contract workers from India. Between 1879 and 1916, over 60,000 Indians came to Fiji to work, mostly on sugarcane plantations. But after a while, the Indians noticed they were being treated like second-class citizens, and during World War II they refused to serve in the army, and declined to work at the lower wages offered to them. This naturally made the indo fijian Fijians somewhat unpopular. Sir Kamisese Mara became Fiji's first prime minister after its independence in 1970, but there lingered racial tensions. Indo-Fijians made up nearly half the population by the 1980s, and when a government dominated by Indians came to power, a Fijian colonel called Siriveni Rabuka emerged to stop it and put Fijians back in power. He later became prime minister himself from 1992 to 99. A number of Indians moved out of Fiji, but an Indo-Fijian won the election in 1999, becoming prime minister. However, the following year, a Fijian nationalist deposed him, and for a while things were a muddle, until another coup occurred in 2006, with Fijian Frank Bainimarama taking power as Prime Minister and being elected in 2014 and re-elected in 2018. Fiji today has a high level of human development, and one of the best economies of the Pacific, and tourists are very much drawn to the country's beautiful islands. Fijians themselves are among the nicest people you will ever meet, and they are very good at rugby. One of my favourite moments from the Rio Olympics was seeing Fiji win the gold in the Rugby Sevens. What awaits Fiji in the days ahead? Comment below. But for now, bye-bye!